Mazda is on a real roll right now. We love the Mazda 3, 6, and CX-5. So what about the new CX-3? Will it continue the recent trend or does Mazda's success end here? Smaller than the equally new Honda HR-V, the CX-3 is about the same size as the Chevrolet Trax with a lower roofline. The CX-3 still has 6 inches of ground clearance, making it a proper crossover. What isn't very crossover-like though is the weight. The CX-3 starts at just over 2,800 pounds. That's lighter than key competitors like the Trax and the Jeep Renegade. Koto design? Check. Skyactiv technology? Check. Just another typical Mazda design, right? So what is there that's new in the CX-3? A few design highlights include a wraparound rear window that really does help with rearward visibility, 18-inch wheels and full LED headlights. It really does have a sporty overall look to a lot of boring or awkward designs that seem to dominate the subcompact crossover segment currently. My favorite feature is the dual exhaust that mimics that of the CX-5. The CX-3 uses a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine like its bigger brother the CX-5. But unlike the CX-5, the CX-3 does not have an optional engine and power is down, officially rated at 146 horsepower and 146 pound-feet of torque. The reason for the decreased power is the CX-3 doesn't have the space for the exhaust manifold usually equipped to the 2.0-liter engine, so a smaller one had to be used. The CX-3 comes as front or all-wheel drive. Regardless of which one you pick, the only transmission available is a 6-speed automatic. For now, there is no manual option. Now, if it's any consolation, there is a sport mode and paddle shifters to make you feel like you're sort of in control. But that doesn't really make the CX-3 sporty, at least in terms of power. Even with decent power and a lightweight frame, the fastest CX-3 still takes over 9 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. But in real world driving, you don't really feel like it is that sluggish. It isn't until you really get on the gas that you feel there is an absence of power. And although official EPA numbers have not been set, Mazda expects that the front-wheel drive CX-3 will get 29 miles per gallon in the city and 35 on the highway. Even if the engine isn't all that sporty, things pick up with the chassis. Despite the CX-3's torsion beam suspension, this little crossover handles really well. It's a solid lightweight vehicle with an emphasis put on responsiveness rather than softness. Whipping it around some mountain roads, the CX-3 is actually pretty fun to drive. I mean, it's no MX-5, but throwing it back and forth, the CX-3 responds and actually can be engaging, unlike other crossovers that can be scary, boring, or both. Despite how lightweight the vehicle is, Mazda was able to add a lot of sound deadening material. On the roads outside of Phoenix, which are in pretty poor condition, it's still fairly quiet inside, and the whole vehicle feels well put together, almost more solid than even the CX-5. Inside, the CX-3 resembles pretty much every other modern Mazda. There's a standard 7-inch display that sits on top of the dash and optional head-up display. The CX-3 also comes with some fancy technology like rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, and forward crash detection. Mazda has done a great job with the interior of the vehicle. All the materials may not be the best quality, but they look more expensive than they are, and the design is great. Front seat space, I must say, is one of the best I've had in a small compact crossover, and headroom is more than ample. Despite the vehicle's exterior size, Mazda wanted full-size adult passengers to fit in the back seat. With a theater-style setup, passengers sit higher and more inward than the front seat passengers. With 35 inches of rear legroom, I fit back there with my legs brushing the front seats, but my head nowhere near the roof. The one downside is there's no center armrest to fold down for rear seat passengers. And while I'm on the topic of armrest, there's none for the front seat passengers in the middle either. Now this is a pre-production model, so maybe the armrest will show up in the final production version. The rear cargo hatch has an adjustable board that can be set for maximum cargo or a flat loading floor when the rear seats are folded down. With the seats up, cargo capacity is only a smallish 16 cubic feet, which gets even smaller if you have the optional subwoofer.
Starting in the low 20s, the CX-3 should arrive in dealerships later this summer. It really doesn't stray that far from the philosophy used by recent Mazdas, and why should it? After pumping out hit after hit, the CX-3 is yet another competitive vehicle from Mazda.